On this episode, I'm going to take you behind the scenes and show you how we produce the Maverick Show podcast. Let's get it. is The Maverick Show, where you'll meet today's most interesting real estate investors, entrepreneurs, and world travelers, and learn the strategies and tactics they use to succeed. And now, here's your host, Matt Bowles. Hey, everybody. It's Matt Bowles. Welcome to The Maverick Show. I wanted to do a special episode today because I have been getting a lot of questions from people about how we produce the different aspects of the Maverick Show podcast and how we do it at the quality level that we do. And those questions come from current podcasters. They come from aspiring podcasters, people that want to start a show, and they just come from fans of the show that are curious. And so I thought that since we have now been podcasting for well over a year and we have well over a 100 five-star reviews on iTunes, that this would be the right time to share with you the lessons and reflections, but also the tactical details, including systems, processes, and specific vendors we use to produce all the different elements of the show. So first of all, right out of the gate, I want to start off by thanking all of you, the listeners, for your ongoing support of the show and all of the feedback that you have given me. It means the world to me and it helps us to continually refine and produce a better show. I would really, really also like to ask for your continued support in sharing the show. When you hear an episode, you get value from it. If you can share that with specific people, but also share it in general on social media, that really helps us to amplify the reach of the show. And if you have not yet left a review of the show on iTunes, it would really, really mean a lot if you could take a moment and just leave an honest rating and review on iTunes of the show. And then I would also love to hear your personal feedback. We are really trying to continually improve and take things to the next level. And so any feedback that you have about what you've really liked the most so far, anything you think we can improve or things you'd like to hear more of, please just shoot me an email at matt at maverickinvestorgroup.com. And I will read each one of those personally and greatly, greatly appreciate your feedback and input in helping us to improve the show. So with that, let's dive into the details. And I want to mention at the outset here that all of the specific vendors and audio equipment pieces and all of that stuff that I'm going to mention in this episode, we have created for you an entire section on the maverickshow.com website which is called Behind the Scenes. So if you go to themaverickshow.com and you click on the tab that says Behind the Scenes, you are going to have direct links to every single vendor and piece of equipment and software that you hear me mention today. It will be in one place right there. So don't worry about writing everything down. Just go to that one place and you'll see all of the links there. So let's start off with one of the main questions I get, which is obviously a centerpiece of being able to produce the show, is how do you find your guests? That's a really, really important one. And the answer is, if you've ever listened to the opening episode of The Maverick Show, Zero Zero, I talked about what inspired me to start the podcast. And what that was is that I was traveling around the world and I was finding myself in these amazingly interesting conversations with location-independent entrepreneurs that had built incredibly interesting businesses and made them virtual and they were facilitating their ability to travel the world and live these really interesting lives. Or they were real estate investors that had bought a whole bunch of rental properties and were making enough 
passive income to finance their lifestyle and travel the world, these types of people. And I was finding myself in conversations with them, often in rooftop lounges or on boats in the middle of the ocean or things like that. And I was just asking them, how did you do that? And tell me these interesting stories that you've now experienced in this lifestyle that you've created for yourself. And I was just blown away by what I was hearing. And I thought, wouldn't it be amazing if we could create a podcast where I could just record these conversations and capture both the stories, but also the tactical value for how they did what they did so that other people could learn from that and implement it in their own lives. And so that's really the inspiration for the podcast. And so the first initial number of guests were people that I just met. I just ran into, you know, because we were at the same event, we were on the same work travel program, we were at the same conference or whatever it may be. And they were people that were in my initial ecosystem that I was like, wow, this person is super interesting, they're super impressive, and I really want to record an interview with them. And also, what's really cool about podcasting is that you can actually go deeper with people when you're recording an interview than you might even just do over drinks, right? So I've actually been able to get more tactics out of these amazing people by getting them on the podcast as an official guest and learn even more from them than I probably would have if it was just that initial casual conversation. And so that was really where the initial batch of guests came from. And then from there, I just continued meeting more people as I would keep traveling in these circles and going to these events and that kind of stuff. But the other thing that's been a huge way for me to identify guests is by realizing that people who do certain things, right? People who build businesses, people who travel the world, they tend to hang out with other people that do similar things, right? So if someone is really interesting, really impressive, they've done really interesting things, most likely they know other people that have done really impressive and interesting things as well. And so one of my main techniques for identifying guests, other than going to places where I think those types of guests will be, is asking my podcast guests who they know that they would recommend for the show that they think would be a great guest. And then they start introducing me to other amazing people. And that's really sort of the networking ripple effect of being a podcast host, right? So that has been my primary way of finding the guests that you have heard on the show. Now, in terms of the process for actually preparing the guest to be on the show, we have created a guest registration page where I have created the fields that I want the guests to fill out. So they will upload their bio, they will upload their pictures, they will include any links to their social media profiles or to their business offerings that they are going to talk about on the podcast. I will also ask them if there are any specific stories that I can prompt them to tell, let's say travel stories or things of that nature. And I will ask them to, you know, share sort of interesting things about themselves that other people might not know, you know, so that I can have a whole series of questions that I can be prepared to talk about with that guest in addition to their bio. So that will be step number one is that I will have them register as a guest and give me the information about themselves so that I can use that as a baseline to prepare for the interview. Now, what I then do is I research the guest myself. And so after they upload that stuff, I will then research them and I will look for other podcasts that they may have been on and listen to some of those and look at their website and read their blog and read their about page on their business site or whatever it may be. I will look through their social media feeds. I will see what they're up to and so forth. And a lot of times guests tend to be very minimal. I don't know if it's humility or whatever it may be, but what I tend to find in that process is a lot more stuff about the guest that is amazing and interesting 
that they didn't necessarily include when they uploaded their stuff on my registration page. And so I now have additional things about them that are impressive and interesting that I can use to speak with them about. I'll often use that to propose an enhanced or augmented bio for them, which I'll send back to them and say, hey, I found this other cool stuff about you. Are you cool if I include that in your bio? And if we talk about it on the show and all of that, and that's part of a process of interview prep, right? So I'll research the guest. I'll find this cool stuff about them. I'll sort of structure in my mind what I think will be the most interesting questions to ask them. A lot of times is what I want to know about. Like, wow, this is a really, really smart person who's really interesting. I want to know how they do this. I want them to teach me what they do in this area so that I can apply it in my life, or I'm interested in their opinion on this particular thing or whatever it may be. So I'll sort of structure interview questions. And then what I'll do is I will send them sort of the proposed augmented bio that I put together for them based on the one they submitted. And then I'll send them also typically a rough outline of an interview flow, just sort of a topical outline of like, I would love to hit on this, this, and this. And one of the things I think is important about interviewing is to be able to have a very informal, casual conversation style so that the conversation can be just that, a conversation. It's not me firing scripted interview questions and them answering them and me going back to the next scripted interview question. It's a very conversational style. So I think it helps if there's a general outline, you're generally informed about the main things you want to talk about with the guest. And then from there, you just let it flow in a very natural conversational format. At least that's what I do. But I'll share with the guests the general kind of bullet points of the conversation. And then I'll share with them usually the lightning round questions that I ask at the end of the show in advance, just so they can think about that. If I'm asking them to recommend specific things like a book or an app or you know, a podcast that they listen to. Just want to give them a little bit of advance notice to think about that so they can have those answers ready since those questions are already scripted and created. So I will give them those in advance. And then I will also tell the guests, typically when they jump on the podcast a few minutes before we start recording, I will let them know that, first of all, I think what's important is to make them feel super comfortable as comfortable as possible and to really put them in their comfort level, right? Like let them be in their zone and really make them feel like they can be themselves. So I will try to do that as much as possible. And I know the guests to varying degrees, right? So some guests I have spent a lot of personal time with and other guests I have not. And so Ideally, for me, I try to spend as much in-person time with the guests before I record as possible. So if I'm with a guest in a particular place, and I know that we're going to be in the same place for a few days, we might be in the same place for a few weeks, I will try to spend some time in person with the guest before we record the show. Like if I hang out with a guest for an afternoon and we go and get food and you know, wine and we hang out and we get to know each other, it creates a level of familiarity and comfort and rapport that oftentimes really helps the casual, informal, comfortable nature of the conversation. So I try to do as much rapport building before the episode as possible. Plus, these are just amazing people that I want to spend time with anyway. So uh, it's kind of a cool way to spend more time with them and really get to know them and connect with them. But sometimes you can't do that, right? Sometimes they're, it's a remote interview. It's somebody that you haven't been able to spend time with in person. And so I'll just try to make them feel comfortable over email by the way I'm interacting with them. And then also right before we record, I will also say to them that they can feel free to express themselves however they want. You know, if they want to swear on the show or they want to, however, they're comfortable authentically being them, that I don't want them to feel that they need to conform in any way to the podcast. They can express themselves however they choose and however they want to, right? So be yourself is the first thing I want to assure them they can do. And then also let them know that, you know, if for any reason they happen to say something that, by the end of the show, they were like, oh, man, I really shouldn't have said that publicly or something. We can always edit it out, right? So just make them feel comfortable. Like, don't worry about that. Just be yourself. And then if for any reason, you know, something doesn't come out the way you want, 
We can always take that out afterwards, but we can't put things back in. And so, you know, and, and that helps, I think, create a climate where the guest is comfortable and feels that it's a safe environment and feels that they can be themselves and be authentic. And then I just try to connect with the guest personality wise as best as I can throughout the show. So that's sort of the guest identification and guest preparation process that I use. Now, whenever I can do an in-person interview, I always prefer that, right? And when I can do an in-person interview, I will always offer to buy my guest a bottle of wine for us to share during the interview. And so if you've listened to a lot of the Maverick Show episodes, you know that there has been a lot of wine consumed during the interviews of the Maverick Show. And there's a number of reasons why I do that. One is because I like wine and it's fun. The other reason is because it really, really, really creates an environment that is laid back and casual and very conducive to an extended conversation, right? So any perception of like a rigid interview professional format is, you know, goes out the window when you have a bottle of wine that's opened. It also gives the feeling that this is going to be an extended conversation, right? We've just opened a bottle of wine and we're not going to finish the interview until the bottle of wine is completely gone, <laughs> And so this isn't going to be a short 20 minute interview, right? This is going to be an interview where we're going to kick back. We're going to enjoy this bottle of wine and we are just going to chat long form about really cool stuff. And what happens is people lose, you know, awareness that they're in front of a microphone and there's people listening and this, you know, it's not a performance. It's not a professional rigid, you know, interview. It becomes much more of a informal conversation And people really, I think, shine their best when that's happening. And it just creates a lot more opportunity for authenticity and humor and delightfulness to ensue. And sometimes my guests are so committed to the concept of wine during the interview that even when we're doing a remote interview, such as the second Sean Tierney interview, my guest will actually have wine in front of them and I will have wine in front of me and will actually be still doing wine, but doing it remotely. So all sorts of options for variation when you can't be in person. But I I certainly like to do as many as possible in person because it just creates a really, really, really nice rapport. And that I think comes across in the episode. Okay, so that's the first piece of the show right? The identification of the guests and the prepping of the guests. And it's a really, really core part of creating a high quality podcast. You need to find guests that are interesting, that are compelling, and that can share high value tactics, at least if you're doing a show like mine, right? I mean, there's a bazillion types of podcasts. You don't even have to do an interview format, right? But for a show like mine, for a show like The Maverick Show, a guest that is interesting, that is compelling, that has done interesting, impressive things, and that can break that down and share actionable tactics that listeners can take away and apply in their own lives. That really is where I think the value comes from. And that's really what I'm trying to deliver. So finding the right guests and then putting them in the right mind frame and comfort level to be their best selves during the interview That really is the first core piece, I think, of creating a high quality podcast. Now, the second piece of podcast production that I think is really important in terms of quality is having high quality audio production. Okay. And so I want to just go through the specific pieces of equipment that I use to produce the sound that you're hearing now. So my microphone that I am currently speaking through, which is always the primary microphone that I use during an interview, whether it's remote or in person, is called the Heil, it's spelled H-E-I-L, and the model is PR40. So this is the Heil PR40 microphone. And I have with that a shock mount, a pop filter, and a boom 
arm, which attaches to the table and holds the microphone in place so that I can speak through it hands-free with the pop filter and the shock mount on the microphone. So that is the audio quality that you are always hearing from me. And then when I'm in person with a guest, the guest microphone that I use is called the Audio-Technica ATR2100. So the ATR2100 is the guest mic. Now, if you're trying to start a podcast and if you are cost conscious, the ATR2100 is probably the best cost for value proposition out there for a microphone. Okay. So the Heil PR40 that I'm currently speaking through is definitely going to be a higher quality microphone, but it's also significantly more expensive. Right. So the ATR2100 is almost as good quality wise, but it's a lot less expensive. And so if you're looking to start off and you're cost conscious about your equipment budget, the ATR2100 is probably the way to go for both you and your guest. If you can scale up and do the Heil PR40, that is the gold standard that the premium podcasters typically use. Now, what I do is I plug the microphones, both the Heil PR40 and the ATR2100, if I'm interviewing a guest in person, I plug them into the Zoom H6 recorder. And if I'm in person, I will just record with two microphones directly into the Zoom 6. It'll record there. And then I will upload it through my computer into the cloud, okay? If I'm recording a remote interview, I will use the Zoom 6 as the audio interface, okay? So my microphones use XLR cables and they plug into the Zoom H6 like a mixer and it's an audio interface that then plugs into my computer so I can do a remote interview with a guest. So in any case, whenever I'm doing an interview, I always use the Heil PR40 microphone I always plug it into the Zoom 6, and then depending if we're in person or remotely, that's the only variable on the next part, okay? So if it's in person, we record directly into the Zoom 6. Boom, that's that. You can do that from anywhere. You don't even need to be online. You don't need to be on the internet. You just have two microphones, you have two humans, and you're recording into a recorder, right? So you can do that from anywhere. If I am doing a remote interview, Obviously, I need to be on Wi-Fi, as does my guest. And the software that I use for recording remote interviews is called Squadcast. And I've just recently switched over to that. So by the way, folks, all of the vendors that I'm now going to start recommending in terms of software, equipment, pieces, you know, vendors that I use for show production and stuff like that, these will eventually change over time. So depending on when you're listening to this episode, if some of these specific recommendations have changed, that's why we created the behind the scenes tab on the maverickshow.com website, because that's going to be updated. Okay. So my former, I used to use a different vendor for recording podcasts. I'm currently using Squadcast. Maybe in three years from now, I'll be using some other vendor. And as I change to the newer and better vendors, we will update all that information on the behind the scenes tab at the maverickshow.com website. So that's going to remain updated. So you can just go there if any of this information gets out of date, depending on when you're listening to it. Okay. So when I record remote interviews, I use Squadcast. And one of the things that makes that amazing is that compared with a voice over internet protocol like Skype or something like that, is when you're on a Skype call with someone, if the Wi-Fi goes down on either person's side and you're recording on Skype, that's going to be reflected in the final audio recording, right? So there's a dip in the Wi-Fi, somebody's voice goes out, and now that's on the final track, okay? With Squadcast, what it does is you're both speaking to each other over the internet. You can even see each other like you can on Skype. But what's happening is it's recording a local copy of each person's audio into their own computer and then uploading it to the cloud. Okay. So if the internet happens to go down on my side or the guest's side, 
It does not impact the audio recording at all because I am literally just speaking from my microphone into my own computer and it's just recording it. So if the entire Wi-Fi just shut down, you know, or there was a gap in it for a while, my audio keeps recording directly into my own computer. The guest audio records directly into their own computer and any Wi-Fi glitches are not reflected on the final audio tracks. Okay, so it records two single audio tracks, uploads those to the cloud, which my editor can then take and merge. And then you have the final production quality, which allows you to have the professional quality of production, assuming your guest has a good microphone, of course, <laughs> even on a remote interview, because you don't have that voice over internet, Wi-Fi interference potential for low internet quality. So professional quality audio, super, super important to make your podcast stand out and sound professional, whether you're doing it in person or remotely. So that's a really, really, really important thing to consistently prioritize. And we believe that the Maverick Show listeners deserve that every episode. And so we prioritize that to the greatest extent possible. Now, other important pieces of the professional quality production, one of them is having professional intros and outros and any promos that you want to include as well. So you'll notice that the opening intro to the Maverick show sounds professional, right? And so does the outro and so do the promos that we use at the end. And we had all of those professionally recorded. We worked with a company called Music Radio Creative to identify the music, identify the voice talent, you know, to script it out with them and the whole thing. They worked collaboratively with us, but this is a professional operation that records all of that professionally and does that for us. So that's the vendor that we used for intros, outros, and promos. And they also are the vendor that we use for editing the podcast. So every single episode is professionally edited prior to it being released, and they do that editing for us. The other piece of professional production that's really important that some people overlook is the podcast cover art. Okay, this is the square image associated with the show that is visible on whatever platform you listen to your podcasts. And so this is really, really, really important because as people are scrolling through a whole bunch of different podcasts, you want yours to be able to stand out, to be clear, to be compelling, to be visually alluring, and to communicate what it is that your podcast is about so that people might click on it and watch it. And you just want to have a good quality piece of cover art because it speaks highly as brand representation of the show in general. Okay, so the way that we did that is we went to 99designs and this is a online platform where different graphic designers compete by designing what you've asked for and you only pay for the one winner of that contest that you want to use, okay? So you would put out, there's different prices that you can offer and you can say, okay, we're willing to pay this much money for the design of our cover art. And then you give all the parameters. So this is the images, this is what the show's about, this is the theme, or this is the script, or this is the language I want, or this is the design concepts that I'm thinking about, or I'd like you to do something creative that encapsulates this theme, or however you want to describe what it is that you're looking to achieve with your podcast cover art and whatever you want to give them. If you want your company logo incorporated in your personal image or your this or whatever it is, and you can put that all out there in the description of, I want somebody to use these things to create the best you know, piece of cover art that achieves these things. However, you want to have that description, the more detailed you have it, the better in terms of what you're looking for. And then all of these different designers will compete and higher quality designers will obviously compete on the ones where you offer more money, of course. And then you get to review all of the different options. You can narrow it down. You can come up with finalists. You can give them feedback. They can revise what they've done. It is an incredible, incredible way 
to come up with at the end of this a really, 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 really high quality piece of cover art because you had so many different artists that were putting in their not just talent designing the art, but their creative thought and effort to achieve the artistic result that you were requesting in terms of how you described what you wanted the outcome to be, right? So that's a really compelling process. And we have a link to that in the behind the scenes page, along with all of the rest of the stuff. Okay. So then the other thing that we do, which is really a requirement for any podcast, right? Is of course, you have to have a podcast hosting service. So the one that we use is called Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N. And what you do is you have to upload your podcast onto Libsyn and then Libsyn syndicates it to all the different podcast platforms. So iTunes and Spotify and Stitcher and wherever you listen to your shows, it got there because Libsyn syndicated it there. Now, there are other competitors to Libsyn. They're not the only podcast hosting service, but they're the one that we use and that a lot of the major podcasters use as well. Now, we also created a website, which we host on WordPress. We host that on Bluehost is the hosting company, but then it's a WordPress-based website, right? And we use that website to offer you the show notes for each episode, okay? So in the show notes, we provide you, first of all, what are called time-stamped show notes, which is an entire text sort of summary, bullet-pointed summary of the different aspects of the episode, the different conversational elements that happen in the episode in order chronologically. And then there are timestamps in there, okay? So a timestamp means you can, it literally says, you know, at minute, you know, 17 minutes and 49 seconds, we started talking about this thing. And if that's the thing in the episode that's of interest to you, like let's say you want to skip over an aspect of the episode that is not as interesting to you and jump into, you know, let's just say you're really interested in the deep dive tactical piece of how this person did this specific thing. Well, you can just go to the timestamp show notes, jump directly to that part of the episode, click on the timestamp, and they'll take you there and start talking about that one specific thing. So it'll give you an overview of the different things that were discussed in the episode and allow you to skip around to the things that are the most interesting to you if you don't want to listen through the whole episode or if you want to just go back to a specific part, like you listen through the whole episodes. A lot of people that, you know, that love the show and they want to listen through the episodes and they don't want to shortcut it. But then they're like, oh man, I really want to go back to that thing that this one guy said, but, or this one woman said, or, but I don't remember where in the episode it was. And it was a 90 minute episode. Well, you just go to the show notes and then it's like, boom. Oh yeah, that's where they talked about that thing. Click. And then you can listen to it again right? Or you can recommend it to somebody that you're talking to. It's like, oh, this podcast episode, they talked about this and then boom, you can just send them right there. Okay. So we provide time stamped show notes for every episode. It's part of the show notes page. We also provide links to everything that we discussed in the episode. So when the guest is recommending books and apps, and they're talking about the different vendors that they use to build their business that were the most impactful, or they're talking about whatever it may be, We want you to have the resources of everything that we discussed and everything that the guests were sharing so that if you want to check those things out for yourself, you can just have the direct links to those things. And that's also going to be included in every show notes page for every episode. And that's really helpful because then you don't have to remember or try to write it down if you're driving or you're working out of the gym or whatever it is that you're doing. The whole point of the audio podcast is that you can listen to it while you're doing other stuff. Maybe you're washing dishes, maybe you're, you know, walking on the beach and getting your exercise or whatever it may be. And you're not in a place to write something down, but you're like, oh, wow, I really want to check that out. Then you just go every episode, just go to one place for the show notes of that episode. And you're going to have the whole list of all the links for all the resources for everything we discussed on that site. We even put the locations that we discussed, the travel location. So as the guest is recommending travel locations or they're telling a story about some travel location that maybe you've never heard of, you're like, what is that place? I've never heard of that. It sounds amazing. And you can't remember the name of it. Well, don't worry. We actually include even the travel locations that we discussed in the 
links to the episode. So you're going to be able to have all of those resources in one place. And you can always go back to them. Anytime you go to themaverickshow.com, you can always just, you know, you can search chronologically and just scroll through the episode list. You can also just click the search button, type in, let's say the guest name is what you remember, or, you know, something about the episode you remember or whatever. You just search and it'll pop up for you. And then you just go to the show notes, right? Now, the next piece of this is our podcast production assistant, Jason. So this is a really core element for us as we were designing the systems and processes, okay? Jason is a virtual assistant that we hired specifically to assist in the podcast production aspects of this, okay? So Jason is the one who's going to do the initial draft of the show notes, listen to the episode, do the draft of the show notes, do the draft of the links from the episode, all that kind of stuff. I'll review it and approve it and possibly make some edits before it goes live, but he's doing the majority of that work. And then he is also doing the publication of all of this information onto the WordPress site. So that comes up on the show notes page, right? So we're publishing the guest bio. We are publishing bullet points of top three things you're going to learn from this episode. We're publishing a a click to tweet quote, you know, something like that from the episode. We are publishing all of the other stuff that I just mentioned as well, the links and the and the timestamp show notes and everything else. So Jason is the one that's actually doing the administrative work to actually make that show notes page come alive and be a reality and actually publish that content on the website. And then he's also publishing the podcast audio episode on Libsyn, which then syndicates to iTunes and Stitcher and all that other kind of stuff. So he is in that particular role. And then he's also communicating with the guests. And so when the guests get their podcast published, Jason is going to be the one to send an email out to the guest and say, hey, your podcast just got published today. Here are some pieces of content for you to share about the episode. And, you know, so that allows the guest, here's the the direct link to your episode, to your show notes page, and here's an image. And we even produce a 60 second video clip, which is an MP4 file. It's actually an audio clip, right? That we took from the episode, like a minute of the guest talking about something really cool. And we use a service called Repurpose. And that service takes an MP3 audio file and converts it into an MP4, basically a video GIF. So it's a static image, right? Which will say like the Maverick show. Uh, we have, have the guest picture on it and stuff. And But then it'll have a line moving up and down as the audio is speaking. So it's actually an animated sort of video GIF, if you will, if you want to call it that, right? And the guest can then post that on any social media platform where you can fit a 60 second video piece of content. And it's kind of a really cool, interesting thing, which will then link them you know, whoever hears that back to the full episode. Okay. So Jason will also use the repurpose service and we're going to link to that as well, by the way, that's, there's also a link to the repurpose service that we use in the behind the scenes page. But Jason is the one that converts that audio into the video format. We actually convert the full length episodes as well into those videos and have them on YouTube. So Jason does all of that. And then sends the email out to the guest and and all of those types of things. So what we did is we created a job description for the podcast production assistant with all these different tasks. We built out the systems and then we trained Jason how to run them. And he has really, really been a core part of our podcast team. Now, in terms of other things that you'll see on our show notes page, we use the Smart Podcast Player, which was actually created by Pat Flynn. If anybody's ever listened to the Smart Passive Income Podcast, SPI with Pat Flynn, it's a great show, especially if you're interested in any kind of entrepreneurship. And one of the things that Pat created was the Smart Podcast Player, and that allows you, that's what you see if you go to the show notes page for the episodes on our website, for you to actually play the episode right there on the website not even having to go to a one of the podcast platforms. You can just play it on our website. So it's an embed player. It's the most advanced and robust one that's currently available in the industry that I'm aware of. And we use it and a lot of the major podcasters do as well. 
Now then also, if you're going to have a website of any kind these days, you're going to need to have legal disclaimers. You're going to need to have a privacy policy if you're taking anyone's information. You're going to need to have disclaimers about affiliate links if you're using any kind of links that are going to get you any sort of compensation. And we, of course, use affiliate links on our Maverick Show website. So if a guest recommends a book, we'll create an affiliate link to that book on Amazon dot com, for example, and then we'll use that affiliate link on the show notes page. So it doesn't cost you any more money to buy the book through our affiliate link, but it flips us a little bit of money. And so that's a monetization strategy for podcasts to use affiliate links by just simply creating those affiliate links for the things your guests recommend. It doesn't cost the listener any more money to use those links, but it does make you a little bit of money for offering those products through your website or those services through your website. So we do that as a monetization strategy. And if you're going to do that, or for that matter, if you're going to capture anyone's information for any reason and and so on and so forth, you need to have the proper legal disclaimers, the proper privacy policies, all that kind of stuff. And so there is a company called Disclaimer Template, which is a really, I think, one of the most cost-effective ways to get, and it's not just boilerplate language. They do have some boilerplate options, but they also have customizable packages where you're actually consulting with professionals on these types of topics and so forth. And so they have a lot of different options, but I think it's one of the most cost-effective ways to cover yourself legally for any kind of business website stuff you're going to be doing. And then also it's important to have a client relations management or CRM system The one that we have been using for about 10 years is called Infusionsoft. There are a lot of CRMs out there and a lot of people are very passionate about their preferences for which ones are the best and which ones are not. (laughs) And so you can do your own research and see also which features you need, how much you want to spend and sort of do a cost-benefit analysis of a lot of the different CRMs that are out there, but basically a way to store contacts of people that want to opt in and receive your content, ways of emailing people, ways of creating automated follow-up sequences and things like that for your email list. And then the other thing that I want to mention in terms of what we did to really produce this podcast at a very high level, we knew that we wanted just come out of the gate with high level professionalism on this podcast. And so in order to learn all of the initial things that we needed to learn about producing this podcast, one of the things that I did was to join a podcast education community. And we joined the what's called Podcasters Paradise community, which is the community run by John Lee Dumas, who hosts the Entrepreneur on Fire podcast, which is one of the most successful business podcasts, I want to say ever, probably. And he created this community where he is training and providing all of the education for how to produce a successful podcast. And so I joined that community and went through all of his training modules to understand how to produce a podcast and how to do it at a very high quality professional level. So we studied all of that initially before we even launched, built as many of these systems as we could before we launched. And then after launching, continued to refine the systems and the processes that we were using. Now, the other thing that we do for each of the episodes is that we create a transcription of the interview, okay? So we use a professional transcription service called GMR Transcriptions. We'll link to all this stuff is in the one place at the behind the scenes episode. So you can just go there and everything is linked there. And GMR will transcribe all of our episodes. So we send them the audio file and they transcribe the whole thing and send us back the transcription. And we include that in the show notes. So when you go to the show notes page for an episode, you'll see there a full transcription of that episode. And this allows you to repurpose your content into text form. So you could chop up that 
transcription and turn it into blog posts. You could use it for creating a book by compiling different interviews or sections of different interviews thematically or however you wanted to do it and provides you a lot of latitude there in terms of those options. And also some people prefer to read. So literally, if someone was like, "Mm, I don't really like consuming audio, I would just like to read the interviews. Maybe they can read quite quickly and efficiently and they prefer that format. They like to see it in writing. They can just grab the transcript, you know, take it as a PDF and print it out or just read it on the computer, however they want to do it. But we have that accessible and available there in transcript format. The final thing that I try to do is hang out with other podcasters and learn from them. And so as I meet podcasters and I talk to different podcasters, sometimes we have podcaster meetups, I will be asking them and they will be asking me and we'll be talking to each other about what's working for you now, what types of you know, techniques are you using to do this or to do that. And we will share different industry, whatever you want to call them, techniques, trade, you know, talk shop, whatever you want to call it, but basically share different things that are working for us respectively. And so that's actually one of the other things that the Podcasters Paradise community does is that it now has, I don't know how many thousands, I'm sure, of podcasters in there. And there are forums where people can ask questions and give answers and all that kind of stuff. Very experienced, very successful podcasters. And so it's really quite a resource. So you don't feel like you're going it alone or you're just there by yourself trying to figure all this podcasting stuff out. By joining a community like that, you immediately get access to all these other podcasters and you can just ask your questions and people are happy to answer and help you out. And you can then respectfully share your input and help them out when you know something that they're inquiring about. And so it's a nice sort of community dynamic. And I try to recreate that in person whenever I can, whenever I'm in a place with other podcasters, we'll usually sit around and hang out for a bit and share podcasting tips with each other, which we always appreciate. And it's always a blast and a good time and fun to see what other people are doing. So I think if you are in a position where you're thinking about starting a podcast and you want to get into the game, I would just start by going to our maverickshow.com behind the scenes tab, because that's really got all of the, every single vendor that we actually use to produce the show is all right there. And then when you get to the point that you're willing to hire someone to produce the show, there's a lot of platforms nowadays where you can hire virtual assistants. Maverick Show listeners know Nathan Hirsch, who founded FreeUp, which I think is one of, if not the preeminent freelancer site going right now. And so you can go to that. I would encourage you to just listen to that episode as well, because it's a really good episode. But you can go to FreeUp, or there's a number of other freelancer sites and virtual assistant sites that you can hire from these days. That's one that I would recommend. And then you can get someone to run the systems and processes for you. But the important thing is that you actually build them. Like You actually have to build the systems and processes first. And so this behind the scenes tab will show you how we do the stuff that we do, the vendors that we use and all that kind of stuff. And then you can just sort of put that into a process and eventually hire someone else to run the administrative aspects of it while you are focused on the sort of artistic content creation aspects of that, right? The finding of the interesting guests, right? Which I think is really, as we said in the beginning, the core essential is find interesting people that have value to share, right? They have compelling stories or entertaining stories, and then they have tactical value that the listeners can apply in their own lives. That for me has really been a huge centerpiece of trying to create a good quality podcast that keeps people listening episode after episode. So I would really focus on that and kind of design your content strategy around compelling guests and being able to draw out really quality content from those guests as a first element, then make sure that your audio quality and your technical aspects are also going to be high quality. So they will give your high quality content the platform that it deserves and make it enjoyable for your listeners to consume it. 
And then from there, it's all about amplification and continuing to get your show in front of more and more and more people, which is where the listeners come in. Right. So I would just bring this episode to a close by requesting once again, if you have gotten any value at all out of this podcast, it would really, really mean a lot to me if you could leave a review, rating and review on iTunes. Okay. And just share honestly what you feel about the show. And then also to share either the show in general or specific episodes that have delivered value to you on your social media, because that is the key to our ability to grow, to amplify our reach, and to grow our audience. So it would really, really mean a lot to me if you could do that. And then once again, all of the links that I mentioned in this episode, whether it's audio equipment, vendors, software, educational community, anything that I mentioned to this community, all in one place, just go to themaverickshow.com and you can go to the show notes for this episode, but it's also going to be on the behind the scenes tab on themaverickshow.com. That's where everything will be. And I hope you get some value out of that. Please feel free to email me directly. My personal email is matt at maverickinvestorgroup.com, M-A-T-T, at maverickinvestorgroup.com. And let me know what you think about the show, what you like about it, any improvements you'd like to see, anything you'd like to see in the upcoming year for us to do with the show. I love getting your feedback. I read it all personally and it helps us to make the show better. So thank you so much for listening and being part of the Maverick community. Good night, everybody. Be sure to visit the show notes page at themaverickshow.com for direct links to all the books, people, and resources mentioned in this episode. You'll find all that and much more at themaverickshow.com. If you like podcasts, you will love audiobooks, and you can get your first one for free at themaverickshow.com slash audiobook. Whether you want the latest best-selling novels or books on investing, business, or travel, try your first audiobook for free at themaverickshow.com forward slash audiobook. Do you want to learn how to travel the world for a year plus with carry-on luggage only and look good while you're doing it? Go to themaverickshow.com slash packing to see a free recorded webinar and learn exactly how Matt does it. He shows you the luggage he uses, the specific items he packs, and the travel brands he likes most. Even if you're just looking to go on shorter trips, but pack more efficiently and eliminate your checked luggage, you won't want to miss this.